Hey there, Patriots. Welcome back to the front lines. Death Watch here to give you guys more intel so you can update your personal armory and fight back against the fake news media machine. And today we're going to be talking about Rick and Morty because both Rick and Morty are possibly <laughs> going to jail for domestic battery and all sorts of other crap, right? But let's get into this, okay? Rick and Morty, uh, their official Twitter has officially said that Adult Swim has ended its, its association with Justin Rowland. Uh, Rick and Morty will continue. The talented and dedicated crew are hard at work on season seven, right? Now, I say Rick and Morty is just dead, right? After this, it's just dead because one thing I'll say this, right? When it comes to voice acting, you might have an idea when you're coming up with a story, coming up with characters, you know, you kind of have an idea of what your characters sound like in your head, right? The way they talk, you know, if they have a speech impediment, whatever, right? Sometimes you'll get a voice actor that reads the lines and then you say, oh, hey, I actually like the way that you talk. And now that has completely changed my, you know, my, the image of how my character talks, you know, and I want you, that person to talk you know, this way for my character, right? And then something might happen to that voice actor, which now that person is gone and you have to replace them. One of the issues with that is now every other voice actor that comes afterwards is kind of just mimicking the way that the first voice actor talks, right? And so this is essentially how it's going to be with the, you know, these new voice actors that they're going to have to hire for both Rick and Morty, right? Whether they have one person doing it or they're going to have to hire multiple people, one person doing Rick, another person doing the high pitch kind of whiny uh, Morty voice, right? Because we have all heard, you know, people do sketches and all this other crap, right? But it's all, you know, it, it all comes off as parody, right? It all just sounds like parodies of what Justin sounds like, right? You know, he's able to do it because that's just how his voice sounds, right? Everybody else who comes out after him is just mimicking, you know, his voice. And it, it really is going to kick you out of, you know, the story because it's like, oh, we all know the guy's gone and all these other people who's now voicing these characters just sound like, you know, very variations of the original voices, right? And it's, it's going to come off as either... Uh, it's going to come off as very just parody-ish, right? In my opinion, that's why I think it's going to sound like, and it's going to kick a lot of, you know, it's going to take a lot of people out of the story, right? Because, I mean, essentially, the story is done, right? You can't fire the guy, you know, who is both, you know, who is the voice actor for both major characters in a series and think that, oh, we can continue milking this franchise forever, right? Most likely not going to happen, okay? So, Let's get into this. Justin Rowland dropped from Rick and Morty by Adult Swim following domestic violence charges, right? Um, you know, that Rowland is awaiting trial on charges of domestic uh, felony domestic violence against a former girlfriend, right? Switch over to Polygon now. The Rick and Morty co-creator was arrested in August of 2020 and released on a $50,000 bond over the two felony charges, one count of domestic battery and another for false imprisonment, right? He faces several years in prison if convicted. Roland uh, pleaded not guilty to both charges at his October 14, 2020 arrangement. His next hearing is in April. Roland's lawyers maintain his innocence on the two felonies, right? And so what this gets into is essentially what, you know, or at least what I'm trying to, you know, write this as is, you know, I'm not taking either side's uh, to this right because hey his former girlfriend did the right thing you know if he had committed you know these type of um, crimes against her she did the right thing by going to the police and actually getting officially charged and he is now have to go before a jury right he has to go through the judicial system where the jury gets to hear her part of the story and then get to hear his part of it and then the charges are then brought forth and then the jury will you know convict him either innocent or guilty of these crimes, right? I like this, right? This, I can't really, you, you can't really take a side to this. It is essentially up to the jury of peers. Now, you can say, well, he's in California, right? You know, uh, in California, you know, they, they play by different ball game rules, right? We all know this, okay? But at the same time, you know, when you look at other people uh, like Ezra Miller, right? <laughs> This guy has been charged with 
the same thing in other stuff and still has a job, in, you know, still has a job and still is not in jail. What is going on, right? A lot of people has came up with the theory that, well, your boy here, Justin, and is most likely not going to get that same treatment because he's all, you know, white bread, right? The, you know, we all know that in the leftist sphere of, uh, you know, this new wokeism, right? The furthest from being white, heterosexual, cisgender, straight, Christian, you know, the further, the farther from that uh, you are, the more of a protected class a person you should be, right? And when it comes to, you know, Ezra Miller, you know, he's non-binary, identifies as they, them, uh, is non-white, you know, he has that kind of protections, uh, 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 you know, uh, protecting him from actually facing any type of actual penalties. You know, look at this crap, right? Uh, the dude uh, choked a woman at a bar n somehow in April of 2020, not in jail. Uh, in March of 2020, Miller was involved in a confrontation at a bar in Hawaii. People were seeing karaoke, and apparently he became agitated, started yelling at the people, uh, yelling at the to them, grabbed a microphone from a lady, yada, 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 right? was... Uh, fine five hundred dollars for disorderly conduct right same month uh breaks into a bedroom starts threatening people screaming i will bury you okay and uh steals a social security card and wallet right uh then you know miller was arrested on second degree assault charges on april 19th per the police report it appears miller was asked to leave by a 26 year old woman and drew a chair at her leaving a half inch cut on her forehead OK, and it just goes on and on and on. But, you know, according to this article from Forbes written uh, January 6th of 2023, Ezra Miller may still have a future as the Flash, despite James Gunn's shakeup. OK, and so what I'm trying to say here is that if I was in charge, right, you know, because all these companies, Adult Swim, Cartoon Network, TBS, you know, are all under Warner Media, right, which is now a under discovery you know the warner media discovery uh merger right and a lot of people are mad at the new ceo who is now kind of cutting the fat right He's looking at all the shows looking at all the different production companies that they now own and saying okay what is actually going to start making us money when this merge is finally complete and we start rolling out the full on warner uh warner bros discovery uh logo everywhere right what's going to make us money what's not going to make us money who what actors uh, what shows, what actors are actually producing stuff or and who's just like who's like literally just draining money from us. Right. A lot of people are upset about this because certain shows are getting canceled or certain uh, certain uh, production staffers are getting cut and stuff like that. It's like, you know, that's what happens. It's, it's always going to happen. Right. You know, you always got to cut the fat when you're super bloated. Right. But one thing that I see heavily is the inconsistency between uh both how warner bros uh you know is handling a lot of this crap right because we all know when it came to johnny depp all because amber heard comes out and accuses him of you know doing things to her you know in a it was just a, a, a an article right a i go the sun which is like a british uh a newspaper company or whatever she comes out says yo hey he did these things to me immediately it gets circulation warner bros comes out and says johnny depp you're done okay there's no actual charges being brought against them nothing right the dude had to take her to court to try to clear his name and even then warner bros is like well we already did what we did you know we're not going back on it right and it took a lot of time a lot of uh, fans coming out saying yo this ain't right and then I I don't even think they have dropped Amber Heard from Aquaman too. Uh, some people I think I think they have, but you know who knows if they actually have cut ties with her uh, altogether, right? I'm pretty sure Amber Heard will still have uh, some protection, still have some people willing to hire her, regardless of this, right? You'll have far more people willing to hire Amber Heard most likely than they will Johnny Depp, even though Johnny Depp has completely cleared his name. And that's just how it is. Um, same thing with, you know, you can say you know, Vic Mignogna, right? You know, one of the things that I, the reason why I wanted to talk about this and take it in this direction, right, is that when it comes to the whole Me Too movement, you see a lot of times where it's just people coming out, whether it's, you know, Vic Mignogna, Johnny Depp, whatever, right? Uh, 
where allegations just come out, right? You know, Anzi Anzari, right? Nothing, you know, right? We're going to talk about uh, that in a future video because a lot of that crap pin, you know, goes in a line with uh, a lot of other crazy stuff. But you just see how people are just come out on Twitter and just say, hey, this person did this, 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 and that to me, right? This is what happened to the co-creator of Night in the Woods, right? You know, uh, to give a little bit of, uh, push back to this right because i remember when i heard that this guy you know essentially you know uh an infamous person in the gaming uh industry right you know somebody who has completely uh changed the gaming industry and why so many uh people hate and just completely attack gaming journalism right this per individual and several other individuals completely tarnished the name of gaming journalism forever right uh this, you know, this co-creator was dating that person. And so it was kind of like, well, you know her background. You know what she was involved in. You probably were kind of a simp for her, right? But unfortunately, she came out against this guy, said that he had completely did a bunch of stuff to her. And then his entire, his family, right? I think it was his sister and all his co-workers at his, the studio turn, uh, turned her back on him. And then he ended up deleting his save file. OK, um, so what I don't like is, you know, regardless of whether somebody actually did something to you or not, you have to go through the judicial system. I don't like this Me Too stuff. I never liked it. I always said that. Yep, this is how it's going to be used. And we saw that when it came to Brett Kavanaugh. We saw how it was being used politically to uh, essentially character assassinate people who were on the uh you know on the, op the political opposition right we saw that when it happened to anzi anzari right you know people were like yo this doesn't look good even people even though a lot of people even then backed anzi anzari was like yo this did not look like a case of you know what this girl is accusing this guy of it does not look like that he still got blacklisted from hollywood right and it kept going on and on and people were like yo we we don't need to be going down this road because it's going to be used against people for any any reason whatsoever, right? And we saw how it was being used both politically, uh, you know, you know, by people who either politically disagree with people or religiously or you know ideologically disagree with somebody, right? How it's being used throughout different industries, right? And so, like I said before, I'm not here to defend Justin. I'm not here to say he's right, he's wrong, whatever, right? This uh, I'm, I'm here to say I like this. I like the way that this is being handled, right? The former girlfriend has some grievances. She's taken it to the judicial system. The judicial system has found uh, enough evidence to charge the guy for two counts, uh, you know, two different counts of domestic violence, and now they're going to have to hash it out in a court of law and whether or not he, you know, and then they have to, from there, the jury is going to determine whether or not this guy is guilty or innocent of the crime, right? None of this, oh, this guy or this girl did this, this, that, that to me on Twitter, right? And then all these people are losing their jobs. I'm, I'm not down with that. I'm down for straight up judicial system, right? You know, this is why we have a rule of law. This is why we have courts, because if you have grievances with anybody, you should take it to the court system. If you don't have enough evidence to uh, get the police to charge somebody or to actually bring somebody to court, then, you know, people, sh you know, hey, you know, you can't get people to believe you then, right? This is how it should be handled. And, you know, like I said, I think kind of, you know, Adult Swim did the right decision, right? I just wish that it was, you know, the same across the board. I wish, you know, every single case uh, that goes across any, you know, uh, regardless of any industry, is handled like this. Even with this other uh, studio, uh, was it uh, Last Stand uh, Games? Uh, you know, we see how this manager is just, you know, just got fired because, oh, some person uh, decided that, oh, I'm just going to look through this manager's uh, text message or no, not even text messages, just tweets, right? Hey, I'm going to go and dig through this person's uh, Twitter account and see who they follow, who what they're retweeting, things like that. And because they follow somebody who is I ideologically disagree with, 
oh, well, then I'm going to raise hell and then get this person fired from my job. And you see how a lot of these industries just buckle under pressure and say, yep, we're just going to get rid of this person for no reason whatsoever. Right. I don't like that. Right. If you if, if, if the person who is if the person is not actually committing crimes or calling for violence, as you see, like with uh, any no. Right. Any no actually calls out a lot of these, you know, Antifa uh, you know, left wing militant types, right, who openly call for domestic violence, domestic terrorism into openly call for violence against people they ideologically disagree with, right? And all he does is say, Hey, here are you here is you posting hateful uh criminal stuff on Twitter. I'm just gonna signal boost you by just retweeting what you're already putting out there on tweets and they scream and cry, Oh, he's trying to he's doxing people. It's like he ain't doxing you. You he's retweeting what you're doing. Same thing what lives of TikTok is doing, right? Uh, all these creepy weirdo teachers are all here saying, "Oh, this is how I, you know, this is how I openly uh, come out and uh, try to indoctrinate my students and to get them to follow these type of ideologies, right? This is how I, I put up these certain logos, these certain uh, certain type of political messages." on my wall so my students can come in and ask me about them so then I can then talk to them about my ideological beliefs and stuff like that, right? And all it lives that TikTok does is say, hey, you know, I'm just going to repost what you are posting on TikTok for everybody to see. And then for some reason, you know, let people on the left get upset and say, hey, you're doxing people. You're trying to get people killed. It's like, I'm just retweeting. I'm literally retweeting what you yourselves are putting on the internet for everybody to see, right? This is not going, you know, unless these people are literally going out in like officially calling for violence and doing things that they're not supposed to. You know, you shouldn't be just saying, oh, I don't like that person on. Uh, uh, I disagree with this person on Twitter. I'm going to go to the company and accuse them of all a bunch of crap and demand they get fired. That's not how it should be handled. Right. You know, it should be handled like this. You know, you have agreements with somebody. Take it to the courts hash it out there, and if the person's, uh, if this person's considered guilty, they're guilty, they go off to jail. If they're innocent, well, you tried, you know, you you, think, you thought you had a case, this person uh, is deemed innocent, give them back their job, give them back, you know, whatever, right, whatever, you know. But I still maintain that, you know, Adult Swim kind of did the right thing by saying, hey, you're being charged, we got to continue, we got to move on with the project, we got to move on with the show, we don't really have time to kind of wait for you to get done with your uh, your little you know court case and stuff right right now. So we're just gonna go on ahead and like just push you off to the side. And then you know if you come back innocent, well then hey, we'll hopefully you know move you back into the production. If not, you know, good luck to you, right? But what say you guys? You know, let me know your opinions about all this crap. Like always, stay safe, stay sane, be vigilant, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you patriots on the battlefield.